Howdy folks, Michelle Valancourt chatting with you from Morel, Prince Edward Island out in the greenhouse and I uh, just wanted to... Well, I'm going to be doing some experimentation today. Um, some honest-to-goodness uh, R&D. So I figured I'd have you along to show you what I'm up to. So what you're looking at right here is a air pump. It's an airlift pump. My, my apologies, an airlift pump. So I'll take it out of the water in a second, but all the way down the bottom, essentially this pipe comes up. It's a 2 inch 50 mil. Uh, there's an air stone at the bottom. Uh, the little hose off to the right um, is an air line which goes down to the air stone. And at the bottom there is a um, essentially a, a grill to ensure that I don't pick up any fish by accident. And what happens, of course, with an airlift pump is that the bubbles move up the pipe as they do so, they essentially lower the density by, mixed, by mixing air into the water. So the water begins to rise with the air. As the air comes up the pipe, the size of the bubbles increase, and you wind up with this sort of frothy mix coming out the end of the pipe. Um, generally speaking, this, size, this type of airlift pump uh, is good for, at best, two to one. Um, in other words, for every two feet of, uh, or 60 centimeters of depth, you get one foot or excuse me, one foot or um, 30 centimeters of lift of head. Um, in practice, however, you'll never see that efficiency. Generally speaking, it's a little bit closer to three to one or four to one, depending on the design. Um, so the air pump I'm using, if we follow the hose up here, is this animal up here. It's a 70 liter per uh, minute. Um, what's the brand here? Active Aqua is the name of it. It's an AAPA 70L. That's the model number. It comes out to a manifold. I've got two hoses running off of it, off the eight jacks right now. One is for the airlift pump, and the other one's just for a conventional air stone down in my sump. So I'll show you that. Um, and it's the bubbles back here. So I've got a little uh, circular air stone churning the water in my uh, in my sump tank to make sure it doesn't go uh, septic or aerobic. So in a minute, what I'm going to do is take this apart. Um, the pipe that goes into the water, the 2-inch 50 mil pipe uh, that goes down, actually has a union um, just below the surface. So I'm gonna actually going to take that apart. I'm going to put a 2-inch um, 50 mil to 1-inch 25 mil reducer and then put some 25 mil uh, one inch pipe to go up. Ultimately what I want to be able to do is raise the height of the water slightly higher than this bucket here because what I want to do is replace my um, hydrocyclone um, vortex aerator. Um, as I said in my last video, the pipe, it works, it does do what I want. The problem is, is that this piece of pipe down here is too big and I will need to completely redo this um, to generate the aeration I'm getting. Um, on the other hand, if I'm going to run an air pump anyway, I get better results using an air lift to a filtration system um, than I do using a badly built hydrocyclone. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so uh, stay tuned and we'll talk about what I'm doing. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull it up so I can show you what the pipe looks like end to end before I make changes and that way you can see the parts I am changing. Alrighty? Okay. Hang on. Alright, so right there is the piece you can see above water. This is uh, one piece of pipe. That's the union I was telling you about. And then we've got this long length of pipe here. Um, this is a shower drain footing. It's designed for tile floors. So the stainless steel piece at the bottom actually unscrews, which means that inside there's an air stone. So what I'm going to do is unscrew that and show that to you. Just one minute. So this is what it looks like with the foot plate off. Um, and then over here is what the foot plate looks like from the inside. So you can see the edges are threaded, so it just screws in. And there's the air stone. So uh, the air hose just goes straight through. And when this thing is sitting on the bottom, it's essentially looking like this. So the air stone generates a column of bubbles that go straight up, um, dragging water in around it. 
and uh, drive, say, column of water up through the pipe. So from here, up through the pipe, all the way, and out the end. So what I'm going to do now is replace the end of this thing and uh, drop it back in the water and see if I can't get... Essentially, I need to add 60 centimeters or another two feet of head to this. So what I'm hoping to do is if I put a reducer... Oops. If I put a reducer here, um, I will increase pressure, and by increasing pressure, I will increase velocity and thus lift, essentially squeezing two inches of water into a one-inch pipe, which should thrust the water higher up. Hopefully it'll work. We'll see what happens. Alrighty, folks, so this is what the changes look like. So uh, that is going to be where water comes out. A little bit of an angle and a spit in. I've got some... So this is all 25mm, um, one-inch pipe, which goes down to the union with the reducer fit into it. And then uh, down there is the 50mm, um, uh, two-inch pipe, and then down to the foot plate with the air stone in it. So everything... The uh, water line ought to be about here. Um, so this ought to give me plenty of height um, to reach up and over. So what I'm going to do is drop this thing in the tank and actually have it pouring water into my hydrocyclone just as a place to put the water for now, and we'll see what happens. So there it is in the water. You can see, and we come up and over, and it's just high enough. So I'm going to plug this thing in now. And over here... And there we go, we are running. Let's see what we get. So it's sort of belching as opposed to lifting, but we are getting water. So now, I'm going to grab a graduated bottle, and we're going to do a time test and see how long it takes to fill up a two-liter bottle. So uh, what this is, is the uh, pressure bottle from a garden sprayer I use in the garden. Um, it's a two-liter, four-and-a-half pint. It's used, um, I use it for doing things like doing a foiler spray of um, seaweed or and fish emulsion um, or sodium bicarbonate, that sort of thing, onto the plant leaves. Um, as opposed to doping the water. Now that I've got plants growing, um, nature, of course, doesn't put things in water. Normally, it, uh, if it's going to change the, quote, soil quality, it comes from the top down or in from the leaves. So I'm, from now on, going to be using a foiler spray. So this is the bottle I'm using. It is handily, however, marked to a, a two-liter marker. So on this side, you can see it's got two liters um, and 75 ounces, so I'm going to drop a funnel on the top of it and then switch, turn this pipe around and we'll time how long it takes for the thing to fill up. Okay, so that was at 40, here we go. So yeah, right around 30 seconds to get two liters. So you can call that a, a very solid four liters per uh, four liters a minute. So that's a gallon a minute. Um, so yeah, okay. So what this means is that I can use this to run a filtration system. Um, the idea is if I take one of this type of bucket, well, actually I'll show you what I've built already. 
So this is my current filter. Um, it's running basically on scavenged water. I've got a pipe run that comes back over here, and I divert a little bit of flow from here down and over. It's currently shut off just to keep the noise down, um, and into a, this bucket. And what's in this bucket is polyfill, which is the same stuff that you find in pillows. It's biologically inert. There's a splash guard, um, some polyfill. There's another one of these sitting in the bottom upside down to keep the polyfill from leaking out. And then the bottom is punched full of holes with a drill bit to make a rainfall, which does a great job of aerating. So when this is running, what's happening is pouring out the bottom of this is essentially a rainfall. And using scavenged water, I'm getting one to two liters um, a minute at most um, without affecting my grow bed rate. And that, in turn, means that, you know, three times a day I push the entire contents of my fish tank through this just using scavenged water. But it's not doing as good a job as I want. It's not picking up as much particulate as I want. So the idea is to take this and put it up here and see what happens. So we're going to make that change next. Hang on. And there it is, folks. So that's my uh, pump doing what it ought to do. And you can see down here what the effect is. So that's the, the pipe over there is the water coming up out of the, um, oh goodness, uh, out of the airlift pump. And the rain that you see underneath here is the water coming out of the bottom of the bucket after it's passed through the filter. Now, because this airlift pump is running from the bottom of the tank to increase its maximum lift, I'm, essentially it's a type of solids lift overflow, except that, well, it's a solids lift air, air lift. I'm pulling any garbage that's on the bottom straight up, oxygenating the hell out of the water because of the amount of air that's being pumped to lift it, and then dumping it into the filter. So that highly aerated water, of course, isn't going to go um, anaerobic in the filter material. The filter's got all kinds of air available to it. And um, if that wasn't enough air, when the water returns to the tank, because it's splashing and dribbling like a little rainstorm, it's aerating again. Um, shout out to Paul Vanderwerf. Um, Paul is an amazing authority on um, uh, all things aquaponics. I heartily recommend you check out his blogs and his videos. I'll throw a link to him um, down below. But uh, Paul is doing uh, a rainfall aerator using a bunch of bread trays. That's the plastic trays that you see at bakeries where they carry in, you know, ten loaves at a time. So he's got a stack, I think it's eight or ten of those high, and he just pours water in at the top over a, over a spreader, bar, spreader plate, and it creates a rainstorm underneath. And that's what he's doing for aeration. Absolutely natural aeration. Simulates a condition that's well known in nature, which is a rainstorm on the surface of a pond. And yeah. So uh, this is where I got this idea, and uh, it seems to be working well. Um, so there you have it. So that's uh, pro I'm going to probably move um, this rig um, to the back of the tank um, so that I'm putting water back there. And the reason I would oops, so that, that the reason I would do it back here is because the uh, there's a lot of pipe work up at the front. Um, my solids lift overflows from the middle of the tank, so I'm kind of torn about what I want to do. I really do want to keep the water movement even throughout the tank. And if I retire my um, Venturi aerator, and not my Venturi, my apologies, my, uh, my Vortex aerator or Hydrocyclone, and I just put water in here, this will create some surface churn here. Um, and I've got, I don't know if you can see it, Right down there is a little, I think it's a 5 watt, it's a mixing fan, essentially. So what it does is it stirs water across the front of the tank to keep water moving um, so that there's a current in the tank. The fish like to play in it, so that's a little 5 watt jobby. Got it on sale uh, basically in the throwaway bin at my local pet store. Um, but what I do want to do is provide some quiet water um, somewhere towards the middle of the tank for the fish to play in. Um, and right now what this does, well, honestly, because I like looking at fish, but this is generating a lot of surface noise and um, water movement up towards the front. And I suspect what that means is that all the fish are going to go hide in the back. 
and I would prefer they hid up. They, I would prefer they hid closer to the front. Anyway, folks, there we have it. Um, that is my uh, airlift pump. Um, so again, it's a 25 mil, um, sorry, 50 mil um, pipe. Uh, the foot is a, uh, I think it's a three inch or 75 mil um, shower drain fitting with a reducer to come down to a 20 uh, to a 50 mil uh, two inch pipe with uh, and the air stone is of course in the, uh, the 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 grating at the bottom the air rises up the pipe hits a 50 mil to 25 mil reducer comes up this 25 mil pipe uh, an elbow here because elbows are much easier um, on um, uh, in essentially every piece of pipe with an angle in it generates um, re re um, resistance, for lack of a better way of putting it. It's kind of like an electrical circuit. So this increases resistance, and this much more increases resistance. 90 degree elbows are really hard on your gallons per hour, or your liter per hour. So I'm using a 45 there to make it easy for the water to come up and over. Um, I may see if I've got another 45, in fact, and replace it up there just to fix that issue. Um, but yeah, so, and then the water comes out. Now you can see, I need to, obviously I'm going to need to hook this up and fasten it so it doesn't move. That's easy enough to do. Just lash it down here, good and tight to the, to the crossbar, and done. Um, so there we have it. Um, airlift pump in operation. All right, folks. Um, I hope anything you saw here was valuable. Um, Bo, by the way, the forgot to mention the um, polyfill inside. That's the polyfill that you get from uh, quilt um, craft stores for uh, quilting and making pillows. As I say, polyfill is just poly. Uh, it's polyester. It's a polypropylene. Um, sorry, it's polypropylene that they use. It's uh, biologically inert and it is functionally indestructible. That's the reason that the folks in pillow ma manufacturing and rope manufacturing and clothes manufacturing love the stuff. Nature doesn't like it, and it doesn't like nature, um, so they ignore each other, which makes it ideal filtration material on the cheap. Um, at my local discount store, I bought a pillow full of polyfill um, for $6, and that $6 Canadian, your mileage will improve uh, if you're anywhere but Canada. So this stuff works really, really well. The bucket is a uh, 99 cent plastic two, two gallon or eight liter bucket I picked up at my um, wholesale foods distributor. It's a place in Canada. We call them bulk burn. They, it's basically all kinds of uh, good stuff in uh, basically buy your own quantity. And so they get all these pails um, that they, you know, because they're buying stuff like peanut butter and icing and all these other things that come in large volume and then they dope them out into easier to use numbers. Um, bulk, bulk pricing. So they sell the empty pails at 99 cents Canadian each, so they're a great tool for aquaponics. So yeah, that's, um, I think that's everything to talk about. Thanks very much folks for joining me on uh, Sunday morning here in, a, in a Morel in the greenhouse for my aquaponics. Um, if you like what you see, if you figure it's useful, do me a favor, press the like button. It helps other folks who are interested in this type of material and this type of content find this video. Um, and uh, I hope you subscribe as well. Um, and uh, obviously, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please do leave them in the section below. Howdy, folks. Welcome back to the greenhouse. Um, I'm going to tack this onto the end of the video I'm making, talking about uh, the airlift pump, because I had a little bit of ambition after getting some other chores done today. Took the time to rig up my, uh, my filter system, and wow, it's working well. So, just want to show you what I'm doing. So, right down here is the airlift pump. So it goes down to the bottom of the tank, and it's the same design we saw earlier with the 50 mil pipe, uh, two inch pipe going to uh, one inch pipe, 25 mil. Um, what I've done is I come up into the middle of this bucket, uh, which is uh, two gallons, I think, um, eight liters-ish, and it comes straight up the middle, and I'll just take this out of here, 
and you can see here that essentially what happens is it's just geysering away up to the top of the and it fills the bucket up and then I've got an old essentially it's a no-name cola type bottle um, and I punched four holes in it because of course an airlift pump is shoving air up that pipe so what it does is it bobs away and as the water comes up the only way it can escape is cut the bottom off the piece of uh, off the uh, bottle and so the only place that the water can escape is by turning around and flowing downwards. Essentially, I've created a mushroom filter, or uh, some folks will call it radial flow. I'm not sure, sure the exact term. But so essentially, the water is forced to flow all the way down to the bottom of the bucket. So if there's any heavy particles or solids, they tend not to want to turn around. And then here, I have an elbow um, turned upwards, which sets the high water mark. I can turn that. If I turn it down, it drops the water level by the height of it, which is, I think, 25 mils. So I'd shave almost 50 mils off the height of the water, so I can adjust that whichever way I want. Right now I've got it set up so it's skimming water off the top. And then that runs through. What I did is I... it's a 25 mil uh, one-inch pipe, so I, that's the inside diameter, so I cut exactly a 25 mil hole in each one heat it up with a, a torch and just push the pipe through. So it leaks a little bit, but I don't care because the water is just pouring into my fish tank. And then I come across this pipe here, straight across, and I go into the next one. And this is my filter pack that I did from earlier. So um, it's uh, the polyfill. I'm coming out both sides of that just to spread water around evenly. And uh, it then distributes down flows down through the polyfill, which is basically the, the height I had in there originally only packed down, and creates a bit of a rainstorm underneath. So I'm uh, throwing a lot of water and aeration into the, uh, into the surface here. Uh, because I took out the hydrocyclone, that's the uh, line for the hydrocyclone, and I've just brought it up and just zap-strapped it there and uh, just pouring the water straight in. So uh, there's an awful lot of surface churn and aeration. The water, of course, coming down out of the rainstorm um, is rem heavily aerated already because of its trip up the, uh, uh, the airlift pump. Um, and then, of course, it aerates more as it flows down through the polyfill, because that's mostly just fluff and air, um, and then falls in. So I figure that water is probably saturated at the point it's going back into the top of the, uh, the fish tank. Um, and of course just the fact that I'm churning the surface and splashing um, also of course that mimics a, a natural natural behavior which is aeration through rainstorms. So yeah that's uh, and uh, you know it's off cuts of pipe that I use for the middle piece. It's some extra parts I had. It's an old, co it's an old cola bottle. It's uh, a couple of 98 cent food safe buckets uh, that I get from the bulk barn and uh, yeah all in all I'm pretty pleased so uh, we'll see how much gunk it actually filters out um, to, if all goes well um, at four liters a minute as I said I rotate the total contents of the fish tank every four hours so by this time tomorrow I expect I should have some sediment in the bottom of the uh, of the flow filter and I expect I should have some fine solids mixed into the uh, polyfill over here I'll let you know how it works out. Thanks very much for watching, folks.